Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihei. Here we are just before the general election. And I, we have an opportunity to get some inside advice from two of Hawaii's most well-known political pundits. With us this afternoon is Mr. Chad um, Blair. That's right. And from Civil Beat. Thank and, you, Governor. Uh, and the pundit that uh, watches all the politicians <laughs> doing whatever they're going to do. I try. <laughs> all right. And Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii. Happy to be here. Both of you have been here before. We've talked about uh, local politics in the past. And, but I thought that today would be more interesting if uh, just before the primary election, we sort of scoop the national pundits. And take a look at the national races. See, this is a la NFL football. Right, right. All right, this is a la <laughs> NFL football. So we're going to talk about the games out there and uh, maybe make some predictions. Let's right. do it. All right, well, let's start with Chad. So, Chad, what, what's interesting we're, out there? We're talking national politics, yeah, right? Yeah, all, all national okay. politics. You know, with this general election, I think the one thing I would say starting off is think about how things went two years ago. And we were all sure Hillary was going to get in there, and, uh, and it didn't happen. And so I'm a little nervous, uh, very cautious. What's happened in the last couple of weeks has been astounding, what has happened in the last few days. But there's a couple things that are really at play here. The Brett Kavanaugh nomination, right. how's that going to affect particularly women voters? Uh, the pipe bombs uh, from someone who was a sworn Trump supporter. And then this awful bombing of the Pittsburgh synagogue where 11 Jewish people died. And... Just this week, as we're recording this today, the president is out there talking about immigration and the caravan and well, asylum. You know, what's interesting is the juxtaposition of all of that. Now, ordinarily, the first three ought to wipe out this election. I mean, you know, in, the, in normal times. And yet, that I think there's a reason why President Trump is so focused on immigration. He is playing up his base. He knows he's got 30, 40 percent of the vote. They need to turn out. We all know what happens historically. Colin, right. in particular, <laughs> during a midterm election, you know, the incumbent party, particularly this one, which controls all levers of government, is going to lose. Well, this is Trump's best bet because he's looking at Bob Mueller. Uh, down in the House of Representatives and potential right. and, and it seems like, uh, Colin, he seems like he's getting uh, some traction with all of these rallies that are... are well, he certainly out. is um, from his base. I mean, and, and I think Trump has taken this strategy of, of, you know, really throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. I think that's made some of the Republicans a little nervous, people in the Republican congressional campaign committees. Um, but, but Chad is right. So you have this rhetoric from him tweeting out as he does, you know, about the, the dangers of this caravan that's coming from Central America, ordering troops down. They're just emphasizing immigration, you know, and, and I think, you know, playing up this you know, uh, uh, kind of white uh, ethnic identity as much as, as much as he can that worked very well for him in some of these swing states in the, in the general election. Well, one of the most interesting, well, frightening, frightening statistic for me was the reports that just came out saying that um, uh, Fox News had the highest uh, viewership. Double, more, twice, double uh, MSNBC, as as CNN. CNN. Yeah, well, CNN. That's, uh, so something and, is very working. This is the mouthpiece for the president. He watches Fox and Friends. Remember where these swing voters are. Remember where this, this core base of the president is. In states like Florida, talk about a swing state. Right. Well, let's get to Florida. You've got potentially the first African-American male governor in the state of Florida. Florida is as diverse a state as there is. I mean, California, obviously, in Hawaii. But you're looking at Andrew Gillum potentially defeating uh, DeSantis, is that his right, name? Right, that's his name. Yeah, and, Ron, Ron. Ron DeSantis. I call him Ron. Yeah, <laughs> a, real, a real Trump hardliner. As soon liner. as that primary is yeah. over, right on that very first day, DeSantis is using words like monkeying around, which somehow raises the, the specter that uh, that Gillum is a monkey. It's, it's clearly playing well, a racist card. what about Trump card. going down there and calling him a thief? Well, that's yeah. exactly. So you it's know? raising all the great stereotypes about African Americans. Very unfortunate. But you've also got a critical Senate race between Bill Nelson, not exactly the most exciting no. U.S. Senator, and Rick Scott, the governor who wants to be in the Senate. And of both of those races, last time I checked, 
are pretty much too close to call. They are, yeah. Well, it seems like Bill Nelson's pulling ahead, though. That's little, what I saw it? in the last week. But saw. it's still it's still very close. I mean, and for an incumbent, I mean, he is running in a swing state like Florida. But Bill Nelson has been around for a long time. He's been in the Senate for, for many years. He was first elected to politics in Florida back in 1972. Um, but he does sort has of it represent, been that long? Yeah, yeah, he does, does represent a, an older version of that Florida Democratic Party. I mean, this was really back when Florida was mainly governed by white Democrats. Right. Um, and, and he's seen this whole shift, and now I think he has to play in this more aggressive environment. And Rick Scott, is um, he, he has a lot of personal wealth. He's taken out a lot of ads. And I don't think Bill Nelson really is used to campaigning as hard as he's, he's had to. Yeah, he's not exactly the most charismatic. No, uh, no. Now, Governor, right service. next door, Georgia, a state right. that's usually reliably red, although it wasn't 30 or 40 years ago, the possibility of having the first female African-American governor anywhere in the country is astonishing. Stacey Abrams where Oprah Winfrey that has right. been campaigning. Can't do better than that. No. Well, well, you know, Mike Pence thinks no, he that's can true. Yeah. You know, yeah. he, was, he was hanging out there saying, I'm as important as that's Oprah. Right. And he got <laughs> laughs for that. But this is Brian Kemp, the Republican nominee, who is the Secretary of State, who has oversight of the voter rolls. And he's got to ban like 50,000 voters, mostly a minority uh, votes, mostly potentially uh, Democratic right. votes. Right. So if President Trump... And and now with this new ad that's running, this television commercial, which is kind of the our version of the Willie Horton version. Right. Remember that was Mike Dukakis right. and George W. Bush, the inmate who got let out of prison, killed somebody, and then somehow Dukakis is soft on crime. In this case, the president is saying Democrats are soft on crime. And by the way, well, that caravan. More than yeah. that, he's using a, uh, a Latino-looking type of person and saying this is the people they're letting across the border, and I got a caravan full of people heading here. Yeah. And uh, this is what you're going to, you know, and you know what? Let, it, yeah. it might work. It, it could work, although, I mean, I think one thing that's happening is a reaction to that in Georgia, where you're likely to get strong African-American turnout because you do have the first opportunity to elect a, a black female governor of Georgia, of all places. I mean, and Stacey Abrams. And she's, uh, she's proven herself. I she mean, has. She she's was, an, uh, what, 10 years? She was minority leader exactly. in the Senate. You know, she's, and so she, she's, she's worked with Republicans. I mean, she really is an effective politician. And so I think it's been tough to, to try to frame her as much as... Um, as much as the Republicans have tried as kind of this radical liberal, because it's really not who she is. One of the interesting things is that the uh, I, I read today that the uh, the registration numbers have really gone up, especially among young people. Well, that's what Colin's Enjoy. getting to. Right. Remember, this is a state where Abrams did get attacked when she was in college for burning, burning the Georgia flag. The Georgia flag back when the stars and bars yeah. were prominent. Remember, this is a state on, is it Stone Mountain? Is that the name of it? Right. Anyway, it's Stonewall Jackson, <laughs> well, there's, there's a whole Robert E. Lee, Jefferson Davis on a mountain. Yeah. And, and, yeah, that, and here we are. the Black Hills. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So I think when, uh, I mean, these are very vulnerable cases. Another border state. Although this race looked very, it was difficult to call. We're starting to see Ted Cruz perhaps pull away against Beto O'Rourke. But that's a really big race as well. And there you actually have a border state that borders Mexico and the Rio Grande. See, that's, a, that's an interesting race because it's actually attracted a lot of um, national involvement. And huge amounts of money. You went in there in, uh, to back up Beto. Beto, Beto. 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 Is it Beto? It Beto. is. I, I, I no, I've heard others make that mistake, but I was just in Texas a couple of months ago. In Austin, which of course is sure. the capital, very blue, you'll see Beto, uh, so, just Beto, that's all it says, <laughs> all over the place. You drive to Houston, you won't see many Betos. You'll see a few Ted Cruz signs, but a couple of months ago, even a few weeks ago, it looked like uh, Beto O'Rourke, yeah. uh, who I believe is a congressman from El Paso, from El Paso yeah. was going to uh, give Ted Cruz a run for his money. And the last I checked, Cruz seems to be edging ahead. We'll see. But that race, again, young people coming out. They right. said that the uh, absentee voting at the moment apparently favors the Republicans. Ah. And, uh, but it's, it's rather close. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, and, and that might not be so unexpected if you imagine the traditional Texas vote. Well, you know, the traditional vote. Democratic yeah. vote that always have to be, you know, needs to be dragged from the beaches. <laughs> but the fact ask, that, that. Ask Frank Fossey. I mean, was. the fact that Ted Cruz is even in danger at all or right. almost loses is, is a remarkable development. Well, and, you know what's. what's it, <laughs> 
I, I, I just have this horrible fear that if, if by any stretch of, you know, by some wild imagination, Trump prevails this time, oh, even if it, is, if it is close. Uh, it, it's not going to matter to him. I mean, he's going to treat it like the uh, Supreme Court victory. We want the tax the cut. You know, no, the same no, 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 thing. Silly. And Trump is all about winning. I mean, that's entirely that's his it. focus. That's yeah. it. No, no matter what happens, he's going to claim what victory. What is the impact of the, um, do you think, or if any, of the massacre? In Pennsylvania. Well, I think I mean so, and this is part of the the, um, the um, all, all of the things that Chad already mentioned together. It really has spooked suburban voters who are on the fence. I mean, that's when you look at the House districts and you look at the ones that are real competitive. They mainly are in suburban areas, you know, generally wealthy, traditional Republican areas, but really object to but Trump's so rhetoric like and the his Romney behavior. Republican yeah, no, exactly, right? yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so you know, you see in suburban Philadelphia, um, parts of upstate New York. Um, suburban Detroit. These are house districts that are competitive, mainly because those voters who might like the tax cut really dislike uh, Trump's uh, rhetoric. What about Florida? Florida with a lot of retired uh, people from New York and uh, with Jewish uh, Jewish background. You know, Florida you bring them out. Is is uh, is a is an interesting state because you almost have five, four or five states in the same. Right. Thing. You have the Miami area. You have the you know what is really the South and North Florida, and you have a bunch of retirees on the Gulf Coast. And you've got and the the Latins, which uh, is often uh, well, it's primarily Cuban, Cuban, Cuban right uh, around the right. Miami area, right? Who I can mean, go Republican? Who, yeah. General Go, go Republican, Republican. Yeah. and uh, you know that was sort of the deviation from most of the analysis regarding Latino voters. Right, that, right. That the Cubans go a different direction. You know, usually when crime is the issue, it tends to favor Republicans. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nixon used that in the '68 campaign and very successfully. Uh, uh, what was the famous phrase from the from Nixon's race in '68? He's going to keep things safe. Oh, the quiet America. The quiet, right? yeah. This is the people, and and our streets are going to be kept safe. And you're hearing the same thing with Trump. So when he brings up immigration, he's they, actually trying to. When he talks about having troops, our troops shoot people on the border because of throwing rocks at us. I mean, that's a a strong message. I'm going to be the anti-crime. So how, how does uh, how does a former Cuban refugee relate to that? Well, they're going to vote Republican yeah. for one thing in Miami for sure. No, I mean, that's no going to be the case. Right? At that's least like, the older yeah, Cubans for that's sure. That's where Marco Rubio. Yeah. <laughs> that's his power base. Exactly. But I think if we're talking you about know, the Senate, he sort of slipped out. Pretty nice well, remember, he wasn't even going to run for the yeah. Senate. He hated the Senate. Yeah, he was yeah. public about it. And then suddenly it's like, well, Trump beat me in my home state. I guess I'll run again. <laughs> and you know he's got to have his eye uh, down the road. Yeah. Not 2020, probably, but 2024. He's a young guy. He's very charismatic. We all thought it was going to be him. It was either going to be mm -hmm. him or Jeb Bush. Yeah. Boy, were we wrong. <laughs> we're well, totally I thought wrong. it was Jeb. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I kind of like, yeah, you know, yeah. personally. Uh, well, that was, the, that was the kind of mainstream Republican that we used to have. He used to get elected to office so, a lot. What about uh, North Dakota with, with uh, Heidi? So, so Heidi Heitkamp narrowly won when she won the last time. She wasn't expected to win six years ago. Um, she won by 3,000 votes. And this is a really interesting race, really, for, for two things, for two reasons, I think. The first is that she did not support Brett Kavanaugh, and there was a tremendous blowback in North Dakota as a result of that. She did get a, a ton of money um, from national donors. $12 million dollars in one week after Whoa. Kavanaugh. The most of anyone, I think, in that short period period of yeah. time. But she's is it by double points behind mm -hmm. uh, Kramer, is that his name? Yeah. And so that's a real concern. But you wonder if that Kavanaugh vote might actually help. Uh, and I'm sure she's spending all that money as best as she can trying to blitz people. But she is a lot more competitive, apparently, than people. Well, I think that's it. And you know, a small state like North Dakota, sometimes it's unpredictable. Sometimes it's hard to poll. I mean, I think the real wild card here is our um, our Native American voters going to turn out mm -hmm. because they overwhelmingly supported her. Uh, North Dakota has a big Native American population, about 30,000 people. Um, but it's controversial because the North Dakota state legislature decided, and the Supreme Court affirmed that you have to have a physical address to vote. And on the reservations, a lot of people didn't have physical addresses. So now the, the tribal they're governments are going the, uh, around trying to find people physical theme, addresses. They're yeah, they're the trying to roles. purge it. Because they know that's, you know, those are the voters that will put over the Well, top. you know what's interesting and, and partly and, um, very important in this election is all the gerrymandering that oh. happened. 
happened. You know, well, it's the entire the reason decade. why the yeah. House is controlled by Republicans. Gerrymandering has made that entirely the case. Even though there have been, there have been rulings uh, rolling back, I think including in Pennsylvania, the way they gerrymandered. But, that's, uh, that's right. And actually, Pennsylvania, there's one Pennsylvania district that's competitive now because they did basically so it, eliminate the gerrymandering. Right. Well, we're going to have to take a break, guys, and we'll come right back. And um, folks, join us. Come on, you know, stay with us. We are actually going to vote on this show. So come on back. You're not going to check our IDs, though, right? <laughs> no, we're going to gerrymander them. Yeah. Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review here on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5.30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss, and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un. The possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Y. Hey and the Pundits. <laughs> so, <laughs> Civil Beat and the University of Hawaii are here to give us their inside look at national politics. So, what about, uh, well, give me another race. What about uh, Arizona? Well, do you want to do Arizona, Chad? Sure. I can do Nevada. I'll take okay. Arizona you then. You do Nevada. Yeah. Well, remember, Arizona's a state that it's really kind of turning blue in a lot of ways. And, and you see uh, John McCain coming from that state. Right. Remember, he's the guy who famously upset Trump by his vote on health care, very outspoken. But you have this race to replace John McCain. John Kyle was appointed temporarily mm -hmm. to take the seat. So it features McSally, two women, McSally and Cinema. And McSally is a veteran. And Cinema, the Democrat, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, has sort of a fishy background. Something mm -hmm. He may have been homeless for a while or very vulnerable. But in recent days, McSally has started to come on strong and take the lead. And in part because she has used her veteran status to attack Cinema for something she said a couple of years ago, many years, about the Taliban and blowing right, off about right. how serious the Taliban is. But something just happened very recently, I think it was literally in the last day or two, the Green Party candidate, a third party, dropped out and said, I'm going to back Cinema." and you got to wonder if those votes are going to drift well, over. Well, what's interesting help. about Cinema uh, is that she is one of three Democrats who uh, voted a great deal of the time with the uh, Trump agenda. Hmm. She actually didn't challenge, she challenged her party more often than uh, Trump in some respects. And Max Sally was doing the exact opposite huh. <laughs> for most of her political career. And all of a sudden, we're in this race, and they sort of switch sides now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Except uh, Cinema is going out of her way to say that she's not involved in any kind of national right. thing. I'm not yeah. talking yeah. bad about that. I don't think Trump has actually gone to Arizona. No, I don't think he has. There's a lot of states that don't want him to visit right now. And it may be that she, he might be being nice to her, actually. <laughs> by uh, not know, showing up. By not showing right. up. It, it's just like Sally. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's sort of, I found that kind of interesting because they sort of switch party sides hmm. in the normal course of events. Now, right. at the, during the election, obviously, every and, and, you know, a lot of the family. themes we're seeing nationally, these are old themes in Arizona politics, this fear of immigrants. I mean, a lot of oh, tension right. between, right. The, you know, the basically white transplants from California and the Latino population. And the so, sheriff. Well, that's, and, our, oh, that's Pyle, right, yeah. Sheriff yeah. Ohio. Yeah. Who actually ran in that race. He did. He lost the primary. Sorry, Joe. And, yeah. and he lost sheriff to, Joe. He lost to this veteran. So <laughs> right next door we have Nevada. Right. So. so Nevada, I mean, Nevada is always an interesting state because it's almost a city state. I mean, you have these big population centers in Las Vegas and Reno and then just very conservative rural Nevada. I mean, essentially nobody's out there. 
Um, and it's become a, a purple state, more, more or less a blue state now. But Dean Heller, the incumbent, is pretty popular. Um, he's managed to hang on. His support is still pretty robust. He even has pretty good support from the Latino voters. Um, and his, his challenger, Jackie Rosen, is not a very talented politician. Um, and so I think she's had trouble connecting with people, um, getting them excited about her candidacy. How important and is the union vote uh, out of the uh, casino? I think essential. I mean, you have to get that vote, certainly, as a Democrat. And if you want to win the general election, you have to make sure those folks turn out. And, and remember, Hillary actually won that state. She did. That's right. So that probably helps. Oh uh, gosh, I've already forgotten her name. Rosen. Rosen, thank you. Running Jackie. Yeah, yeah. Jackie, Jackie Rosen, exactly. Uh, in fact, uh, also helping her is Harry Reid, mm -hmm. uh, the former right. Democratic majority leader. And he actually reversed his position on birthright citizenship. This is basically reversing. Yeah, you remember the 14th yeah. Amendment yeah. saying, you know, the 14th Amendment is pretty clear. If you're born in this country, you're a citizen. But Harry Reid is coming out recognizing in particular the large immigrant population, mm -hmm. a lot of them working the casinos in Vegas. Well, a lot of people from Hawaii That's work right. in the casinos in Vegas. Yeah. You know, I'm playing you know, the casinos. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> vacation to Hawaii. That's right. <laughs> but they are about ten, over 10% 10 of the population yeah. of Las Vegas uh, originates uh, from Hawaii. Got it. Is it up to that much? Yeah. Really. So I remember in the last couple of elections, uh, even I've gone up there and uh -huh. campaigned for some of the uh, Nevadans. I wonder where they would stand in all of this. I have, you know, just no idea. It's also possible they've kept their voting uh, residency in Hawaii, too. You wonder. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think so. The real question is whether they're out voting. Yeah, yeah I think well, that's the question. I mean, you know, they're, they're they likely to belong be to the union, union voters. You know, Democratic another state where voters. Trump, I think, is making a difference is in Montana. We haven't yeah, we haven't that. talked oh. about Montana. John Tester, you know, he's the guy with the crew cut. Right. Yeah, he's about 6'5", oh, 300 shit. pounds. Big oh, yeah. sky country. But he's got this guy, Rosendale, right. who's running against him. And who's Trump, not from Montana, no, which is an issue. Exactly. Yeah. And so yeah. Trump has actually gone out there several times, and they say Trump has a, a vendetta against mm -hmm. Tester because he's the one who famously called out uh, the president's doctor in the White House, uh, Johnny, oh, right. oh, whatever his name it'll come is, to me, yeah. I have it written in my notes, Ronnie Jackson, that was Ronnie his name, Jackson. saying he had a drinking problem uh -huh. and essentially, you know, he lost his own. Well, Trump is going around to all these states. Yeah. And where, where they will take him, there are a lot of house races which pretty much looks solid for the Democrats, where yeah. Trump is not welcome, where the candidates in the Republican Party are actually being very careful. You even have some of them talking about health care and saying maybe Obamacare is not such a bad idea, recognizing that that is a valid issue. They don't want to talk about immigration because their constituents don't want to Well, talk you know, they're, they're running two national ads. So the Republicans did two big national ad buys, and it sort of demonstrates the extreme. One is this, you know, be afraid of immigrants. It's right. very dark. It's about uh, people from Central America coming over the border. The other is a very traditional Rockefeller Republican ad, which is about a woman looking after a daughter going to a music uh, a concert and then reminding everyone of the dark days of the economic crash and trying to right. link that to Obama right. and say, don't, don't go back. I mean, it's sort of reminiscent of the classic how, how, Reagan ad. How uh, effective has Obama been? I, I would all say he's been with all of his speeches fairly quiet. So, yeah. I, I, um, he has not appeared as much. Joe Biden has been much mm -hmm. more visible. Even Michelle Obama, I think, was down in Georgia. That's right. Uh, she's actually more popular than Barack Obama. But the president has remained largely quiet, although he has warned that this election actually means more than two years ago or even when he was mm -hmm. elected in 08. He's doing a lot of fundraising. Yes, I think yes. he's been effective That's on his getting, raising money. Yeah. yeah. In fact, the Democrats as a party, have taken in a lot more money than mm -hmm. the Republicans. Well, that's if you count the contributions directly. Sure. To, you know. And, and, and well, Mike Bloomberg well, himself accounts for a lot of that money. Like almost $100 yeah. million or yeah. something like that. He spent an really? extraordinary yeah. amount of his own money. And, of course, he's also looking ahead right. to 2020. Sure. He, now he says he's a, a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> he was a Republican. He was an independent. Now he's a Democrat. We can have two billionaires run against each <laughs> other. Oh, well, one of them we're not quite sure. Yeah, that's right. Money he, he, may, he may not be. <laughs> he may not be a billionaire. Okay, let's talk about, uh, well, first of all, Who's going to win the uh, Senate race in uh, Florida? I think Bill Nelson's going to win. That's, that's I think I think he is. I agree. What about the governor's race? <laughs> that's tough. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think it's going to be oh. it's <laughs> Catherine Cruz, Cruz from HBR uh, calling to get a quote from the governor. Uh, we are live. This is not a fake <laughs> news program. That's right. I, Andrew Gillum, I think the momentum is with it him. It is. I think the, just the demographics that are changing in that state. You mentioned the strong Jewish communities that are there, many of them retirees from, from the Northeast. 
and I give him the edge. Uh, but there's a reason why Trump has gone down to Florida a number of times, not just to play golf, but because he is really worried. How embarrassing should Nelson keep it and a Democrat, African-American governor, run the most important swing state two years from mm -hmm. now? Yeah, so... Gillum, Gillum. I think I think Gillum as well. I think I think I agree with Chad that the 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 momentum is with him. It's going to be close, but I I think I think he's going to win. Okay, you heard it first here. You now we're not going to play this back, are you? Unanimously, <laughs> Gillum. Well, we're going to play this back on Wednesday. You were yeah. wrong. <laughs> so get to Georgia. Georgia, boy. I I mean I know we have to decide here. So I'm going to say Stacey Abrams. I mean the, the the polling is a tie or maybe I saw one that was plus 1 Abrams, but again, I think there's a lot of momentum and when the African American community turns out in Georgia, I mean they're they're big women um, voters and women voters in, in particular, um, I think that could put her over the top. I think it's the higher bar in terms of an African American getting into office because of the more diverse population in mm -hmm. Florida for Gillum, but um my god, what a significant thing that yeah. would be. Yeah, well, I'm going to go with my heart, too. So all we'll right. see. We'll have another triple Abrams, vote. Abrams, Abrams. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're all there. Um, where are we going to go next? Texas. 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 Ted Cruz is going to keep his seat. Uh, the, Beto O'Rourke had a lot of support, a lot of money, but he's not going to be able to seal the deal. I think a lot of the Texans are going to come home to the Republican Party, even if they don't love Ted Cruz. I think he peaked uh, too early, mm -hmm. O'Rourke. Uh, I think he looked like the, the next Bobby Kennedy. And they were already talking about him as a presidential contender. And, and, it, and the dynamic changed. Ted Cruz woke up. Yeah, sometimes. And, sometimes. and there's Ted Cruz with the president mm -hmm. in Houston. This is the same guy that attacked his wife. The attractiveness yeah. of his wife. He was his father of being involved in the Kennedy assassination. Yes. There they are. Beautiful Ted, you know. And that's going to mean a lot, the president's yeah. support in Texas. Yeah, I, you know, I'm going to go the opposite way. All right, all right, I'm that's go good. I like it. Way. And, and the reason why I'm going to go the opposite way is because I think that Texas has more progressive young people mm. than people count. It is becoming and, that way. And, yeah. and, uh, and I think that they're going to go out, and it's going to be real close, but maybe... Is it Beto or Beto? Beto. 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 It's Beto. It I is think, Beto. Yeah. I think he'll I will say this. The thing about Ted Cruz is he's, nobody really likes him very much. No. Okay. Oh. Real quick. You know? <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah. Missouri. Um, I think I think McCaskill's going to lose. Mc, McCaskill's going to lose. I yeah. agree. I think uh, Josh Hawley was not a great candidate, but McCaskill's gotten really lucky a couple of times. Yeah. And she's, she's not going to do it this is, time. That's as swingy a state as Florida is, too. It's right there but on the border. But it's been trending Republican. It's, it has. has gotten more conservative. And what about uh, North uh, Dakota? Uh, I don't think. I think it's going to be Kramer. It's probably going to pull it out. Yeah. I don't think. Uh, I and by the way, we're, we're talking about the Senate. I don't think the Senate's going to flip. I, no. I yeah, think, real yeah, quick. Is yeah. the Senate going to flip? No. I don't think so. I think. What Mitch do you McConnell, think it'll be? 51, 50, 49? I think they'll pick up two seats. Mm -hmm. I think there's a pretty good. You know, one of the things about this particular election is that there are a lot more Democrats that's running. That, that's right. It's than been, the Republicans. They knew that the going next in, cycle, yeah. it's the, a house, more the right. house is pretty much going to be... Uh, it's going to be a, a big pickup. Yeah. Nancy Pelosi is already measuring the curtains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I Get wish back. she wouldn't do that. <laughs> they're, the they're, you know, she, it's, Her problem is she's got a young membership, a new membership mm -hmm. that wants new leadership, and, and she's been there forever. Had Hillary Clinton been elected president, she said she would actually right. leave the House, but that's not the case. And I think even though she's kept the impeachment word quiet, she very much has a lot of things that she wants to do. Okay, so House, Democrats, Democrats Senate, Republican. McConnell is still there. I think the so. The old fuck. I think well, so. Well, guys, <laughs> look. Well, we are, let's, you know, we'll see. Wednesday's It'll coming up real quick. Yeah. We're doing this just before the election, and we'll see how, how accurate our pontificating may be. Thank I hope you, we're everybody. right. Thank <laughs> you, We'll see you in two weeks. Join us for another talk story with John Wahey.